Hey guys, it's Joe at Tuesday again. Uh, today, what we're going to do for you is actually show you how we tune a juke. Uh, we'll walk you kind of through the, the process. A lot of people kind of confuse when we do the tuning. Like, you know, are the numbers really real? Are we messing with anything? We use a, a dyno jet, uh, and it can't. The numbers that come up on the screen, they can't be modified. They can't be adjusted. They can't be manipulated in any way. So we're actually going to show you uh, a juke that currently is not tuned. Um, we put our downpipe on it. Uh, it's got a, a couple other bolt-ons, uh, piping and exhaust and a cold air intake. Um, so we'll do a couple baseline pulls. We'll show you that, what the car makes. And then we'll actually start tuning the juke uh, with uprev, show you some of that process, and then show you like the final numbers that it makes as well, too. So kind of walk you through sort of the whole process of how we tune the MR16 uh, DDT. But just really quickly, this is... Kyle French's uh, Nismo RS Juke. Uh, I like the livery on the side and everything. Really cool decals. And it's actually going to be um, shown on that dude in blue on YouTube in a couple days. So you'll probably see it again uh, if you look for that as well too. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we always do our runs in fourth gear. It's about as close to one to one as we can get. So we'll go ahead and put it right about 2,000 and then we'll make our pull. Uh, this is an untuned uh, juke. the numbers on the screen see what we got so untuned you can see how the ECU is trying to compensate for the amount of power amount of torque that the car is making by varying the boost all the way very like erratically you see the numbers are pretty sporadic too torque 255 249 255 horsepower jumps a little bit but again, you can see how crazy the curve is. Let's just look at like the torque. So you can see the computer trying to compensate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flash it and then we'll start making our adjustments. But right now, with all the bolt-ons, about 205-ish, 252 would be a good average. All right, so we're connected uh, to Kyle's Juke. Uh, it gives me the part number. It's a stock ECU. And then we're going to go ahead and flash. And I'll explain to you how we do some of the, the tuning. We do it very carefully on the Juke. Obviously, um, we don't want to get too extreme and have any issues with the engine. All right, so let's go ahead and flash it. All right, so we downloaded the stock, the base ROM from UpRev. Um, and all we do, once you do that with the part number there, you click on the get tune stock files and you just type in that number and select that uh, ROM. So we're connected, we just say flash and it tells you that it's a stock ECU. It's going to take a license off the cable and then you hit flash. It kind of does its thing. All right, so now it's flashed. So if we go back to where it says ECU ready, we now have a upper rev flashed ECU. And usually what I like to leave open is the fuel compensation and the uh, timing table, um, just so it'll trace when I do a pull. And then I'll click on logging and tracing and I'll kind of show you some of the fields uh, that I select. It's gonna be hard to do this one hand, but give it a shot. Just bear with me real quick and I'll walk you through it. So we've got air fuel correction, bank one. We're gonna make sure that that is selected. Uh, we've got air fuel ratio, bank one. Obviously we wanna be able to see that. And kind of make your way down. Um, boost control, solenoid duty cycle, boost sensor, bank one. Uh, the coolant temperature is already selected. 
keep going down. Engine speed, obviously that's RPM. Uh, I do like to look at the exhaust and the cams. Let's see what else. Ignition timing advance is selected. Injector duty cycle, intake air temperature, intake camshaft advance, of course. Uh, knock strength, we'll see that. See if we have any knock, very important. And throttle position, that means I can tell how far down on the throttle we are. And then I like vehicle speed. So basically you can just hit the red button and it'll start recording. Uh, let's go ahead and start it. There we go. Alright, so we've got our data on the screen, and you can see it's kind of running, if you look at the air fuel corrections, it's kind of running uh, a little bit on the lean side, so we're going to add a little bit of fuel while it's idling, us having to, to add some fuel there, so we'll, we'll fix that. Um, and then what I like to do is, I'll run, since it's fresh tune, I'll run, um, the dyno runs in very small RPM increments like 2,000 to 4,000 and I'll just work on that range and then once I'm happy with that then I'll go from like four to like five and then when I'm happy with that then I'll work on from five to six so I'm not going to bore you with all that but you, you'll kind of see like a bunch of dyno runs when I show you on the screen it's really just all those little segments till I'm kind of happy with the whole picture and then I'll start doing like full uh, dyno pulls at that point all right so stay tuned all right, so I guess about, I don't know, hour or hour and a half have passed. We're on our final uh, dyno run, and everything looks pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a pull, and then uh, I'll walk over to the screen and kind of show you uh, where we are. All right, so let's get it on. here to see what we got so you can see we're making vastly better numbers than before and what I'll do is I'm gonna bring up uh, we'll bring up 10 and number one for everybody I'm gonna do this real time so get rid of that get rid of that and 10 and number one Let's make 10 red, a little easier to see. There. Look at that. All right, so we'll just look at torque, get rid of the horsepower. You can see we're now at 325 foot-pounds of torque uh, versus 255. Uh, and what do we gain? Uh, right it looks like 3300 rpm we were at 190 foot pounds now we're at 322 foot pounds of torque so 130 foot pounds of torque was gained just from a tune from 2j and you can see all this little squiggly shit all that's gone we bumped the rev limiter up a little bit too let's go ahead and look at the horsepower lay that in there there you go take out the torque so we're just looking at horsepower and then again 
we were sitting at 121 horsepower at 3300 rpm now we've got 204 so it's at 85 ish 84 83 right pretty substantial gain in power again much 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 smoother than what we were looking at before and we'll go layer the torque back in so you can see even though we had bolt-ons without the proper tune it really you're not getting the full benefit and we tune good god i don't know 50 or 60 jukes by now so this kind of gives you an idea of uh of what we can do and if you look here i was talking about the time it took us from 5 509 when we started till 6 30 so about an hour and a half or so i mean even though i've done it a lot it's still it still takes a while to get the duke uh, juke dialed in when we clear out first one that's how it was before and that's how it is now pretty damn uh impressive all right so we just wrapped up the tuning uh on kyle's juke and like you guys saw we made 130 foot pounds of torque at the wheels gain which is actually pretty massive compared to what it was stock uh, when I say stock, I mean untuned. Now, remember, on the car is a 2J ceramic coated uh, downpipe, midpipe, uh, cap back. Uh, he's got an intercooler and he's got a cold air intake. And we did the baseline runs with all those parts on there. And you could see the numbers weren't that bad, but it was real wavy. The computer was kind of trying to control the amount of torque that the car was making. It was kind of jumping up and down. And now that we've gone in with uprev, fix all those parameters, set the cam phasing, set the ignition timing, set the fueling, uh, optimize the way that the car makes boost, you can see that the curve is like way clearer, way smoother uh, than what it was before. So certainly the importance of a tune, uh, we just can't um, state that enough. So thank you for watching, and uh, we look forward to hearing back from you uh, with your comments. Thank you. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys is everybody talks about the gear ratio. So if you notice when we started tuning on uh, one, the gear ratio was 63.9. And then now that we're up to 10, the gear ratio is 64. Everybody thinks we're doing some crazy shit. We're not. The tire's getting taller. So it changes the gear ratio. A DynamoJet automatically computes the gear ratio. I can't change that. I can't modify it. I can't do anything about it. It is what it is. So as the car makes more power, obviously you can see that it's making a shit ton of torque. The gear ratio is going to change based on the, the tire getting taller. All right. I didn't do that. It did it on its own. We can look back at probably two and three and look, the gear ratio is the same because it was making the same power. Three again. They made slightly less power in three. If you look at it, it made 199. Therefore, the tire was probably a tad bit shorter right there. Nobody's doing any funny business on the dyno. It's automatically calculating the gear ratio on its own. Thanks.